So we've looked at any sort of open street map and how you can what we, what you can see who puts it in and how you can put stuff in. So really I'm going to be looking at what can you do with it, what can you do a bit more with it um, now that you've got access to that data. So this is where there's a bit of overlap. So there's some really good examples of, of open street mapping data. Uh, and there's a map on this best of OSM.org. And the UK looks a little bit fair, but that's because it hasn't really been updated. There's a lot of good things in the UK. We're looking around, you've got things like Pompeii, so um, historical city, which has been mapped in detail. Uh, that's quite nice. To walk around, find out where water fountains are, so you can dehydrate and look at the old street patterns. Um, but CERN, you might be able to see two faint rings, the atomic particle accelerators, the, what, what did they do? the speed things up in the big one and then fire it into the little one and send them off on the different, way around. and it collides. The other way around. Is it the other way around, but then black hole opens up into it, and they all yeah, fall into it. So that's um, that's quite nice. It's nice that somebody, actually I think CERN, a lot of the work to put that together. Uh, a lot of geeks in that, it's for a kilometre. And then looking at cities, uh, Burn is quite nice. It's got um, trees, the little green dots or trees on one avenue. Um, <coughs> Bob was showing me some trees in Edinburgh that like the guy who's done the hedges is probably for tomorrow. Um, trees, trees are a one. <laughs> People like the little green dots. Yeah, so that's quite nice. And also you can see the house, the house numbers. Um, some countries in Europe aren't quite as lucky as we are in the UK with having the Ordnance Survey to fall back on, so they've got a lot more uh, time and effort into putting these attributes in across a, a larger area and maybe we're catching up now in the UK. Um, although street uh, house numbers aren't necessarily in most map data, which is the most detailed mapping data we've got. Uh, so looking a bit more closer to home, I like this one because I like hiking. So that's Peebles uh, and probably Britain's most popular mountain bike network. Uh, that forest is Scotland's second biggest tourist attraction after yeah, Edinburgh tourist. Castle. Yeah, Grand Trash Forest. Uh, it's also probably uh, the feeder of most broken bones to <laughs> hospitals in the UK. Uh, an alarming rate of wrists and collarbones, um, which would not be. Uh, so the little blue dots are actually the trail network, which people have just gone out with GPSs. Um, they're not constantly changing, but they do change sort of on a bi monthly basis, neutral, so all right. And that's good because. Uh, you can't always get the forestry map, it's not always available, but you can, you can have that on your phone. Um, so that's quite nice. Then we've seen the zoo, the zoo's great, um, with all the enclosures. And we've probably seen that as well. Put that in because it's Joe, who's not here today, who's responsible for putting in architectural features on an old church. So a lot of a lot of effort. That was from the uh, that was from an old map, yeah. yeah, which came out of the National Library in Scotland. Um, so taking old data uh, out of copyright and Edinburgh's a historic city, not a lot has changed. And scanning that in. Uh, uh, she what she did was she got uh, it was a detail map from the National Library of Scotland. Then she put that in as a uh, she had a scanned image. Then she brought it into Jossum and she traced from it. Okay. So it's a geo -tiff. Essentially, when she got it in. And the National Library of Scotland has a project running to crowdsource um, geo referenced maps. So, through this geo reference R uh, bit of software where they, they scan the maps and they put them up, and then you click on a map and then you geo reference it and then you submit it back into the repository, and then somebody else comes along. It looks a tink as well. It's pretty good, but it's not quite right because I know that this point is this and this is this. And then it does another polynomial fit, and eventually you've got a very well geo reference mm -hmm. map. Which hopefully you can then do nice things in OpenStreetMap with. So, cloud made, what am I doing here? Well, we've already looked at um, the little blue plus sign, uh, and that's really where you would then change the, the, the way that the map's rendered. And this is another bit of overlap. So, we, we can see map make, Osma render, cycle map, and no name, uh, and then you've got a, a, a data overlay if you want to. So they're all called themes and CloudMade is a company which has spun out from OpenStreetMap. Um, and it does consultancy work 
uh, but it has no more access to the data than anybody else. So there's a bit of a, these guys have got a, a head start, but actually they don't, they just probably understand the data better than. Well, it's probably it's quite a way to find the best deep coast. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, well, it's kind of, it's still going. It's grown and shrunk a wee bit. It's still. Yeah, because Steve, Steve Coast left to go to uh, Microsoft. Steve Coast was the guy that originally founded OpenStreetMap, or one of the, well, one of the people that founded it. Yeah. Found it. Uh, Joe Walsh was actually one of the originators of OpenStreetMap. She, Joe, Joe got herself into loads of trouble by doing stuff that the Ordnance Survey didn't like and got summoned down to Southampton to explain her actions and things. <laughs> so she's, um, but that's, that's Joe. She likes to take on big organisations for the greater good, I suppose. So if we look at what they do, <coughs> that slide's almost the same. They've got some neat tools. Um, there's a web address. There's not a web address. There's a web address. So just cloudmade.com. Uh, and then there's a there's a tab called products. And in that, you'll find various things. MapZen, uh, which does routing, I think. Uh, and then you've got um, API keys to get OpenStreetMap onto iPhones and iPads. There's things that you can play around with, and they, they tend to put things up and let you play with them for free. So you just have to register with your email address and get in. Um, and another one is Map. Is that Map? That's it. Maps. Map, yeah. Maps and Maps the, end, yeah. the application on there. Yeah. Phone. Yeah, that's Maps then, isn't it? Yeah. No, um, yeah. This was about 12 30 at night, so it's not too good. So CloudMade is, um, we're going to look at the, the maps tag in there. So the, the, the address is maps.cloudmade.com, which gives you this screen, which is OpenStreetMap in a big viewer with uh, some extra stuff down the side. So instead of the blue panel, you've got uh, a change style panel, if you click the change style. And then you, you've got more more themes that you can you can move to. So we'll have a look at a few. So there's it's four themes up there of the centre of Glasgow. And really, it's re- reiterating the point that a lot of the stuff that you get from the Ordnance Survey is as is, and they're only actually now catching up with uh, allowing people to define their own themes for um, particular needs, and it's generally accessibility issues. So um, uh, an alarming percentage of British males have uh, problems with colours, um, and some of them have an official reason for not getting their clothes right. To get reds and greens, and but two of the main colours on urban survey maps are reds and greens, and then you've got blues. So if they all look roughly the same, then then you're in trouble. So open street maps kind of been ahead of it because it's people put a lot of effort into making maps look pretty, and that's part of the attraction of maps. Um, but it means that you could customise a map to fit uh, a colour scheme on a website or a corporate identity, or you can bring out salient features within the map, like the cycle map, which highlights the cycle features uh, whilst not getting rid of but um, detuning other features which may confuse the user and that's the that's part of what a map is it's meant to bring certain features to the fore. Um, interestingly Apple has filed a patent to patent maps. Uh, it, the wording of it says that it wants to patent the uh, cartographic representation of geography where it focuses on specific parts of a geography to make them easier for a user to understand, which by my logic means that actually what they want to do is patent a map. Uh, it's composite maps as well, it's not just geographic. Yeah, so non, non-spatially correct maps like the, um, the Beck map of the tubes, yeah, that, that would then have... So it's, it's one of these things, it's whether there's is it prior art will come into it, but actually maps have been going on like this for centuries, so uh, wind your neck in. And so I just wondered, as, um, uh, I don't know if we've got enough time for people to just have a quick look at CloudMate. I was going to go in. Uh, I'm just thing. looking at it now, it's uh, http uh, colon forward slash maps dot cloudmate.com. It's just having a work look at this because I think you're going to be talking about map now. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going into uh, going into so. If you go into the the maps tab, then you'll get this, and then we'll. So yeah, as I said, the the presentation is. It should have some spaces where I can dip into the internet, but if that fails, we should still be able to carry on. 
from like east of Scotland for the sunset. It's, it's actually quite good because the, I'm not sure how they do it, but I think they, when you're changing the style, because you can, uh, if you go to this website and you click on change style, they render it on the fly because uh, they just can't do the whole world. What they'll be doing is they'll probably be looking at the extent and then buffering it out by X amount and grabbing that and then serving it I would imagine, to, to make it quick because it is alarmingly fast. So Midnight Commander is quite a good one to pick because it's it's bonkers different. Um, so where do you get the or change style? Change, change style and then um, you can then pick your styles down here. And just you, you can play around in, in your own time, it's, it's quite nice. You'll see some themes. So, say we wanted to make our own theme, uh, I would probably suggest having a look through the themes that are already there um, until you find one that is broadly similar to what you want, and then tweak it rather than starting from something which is completely different. Uh, to to make your own theme, you'd hit this edit map style button and then wait, uh, and this gives you an even bigger list than you saw before. Um, and you can do things like you can filter by colour, so if you're interested in maps which are mainly purple, um, you can do that. Uh, you can also look at these um, tabs at the top, and they've got featured ones and the ones which I think are good and ones which are brand new. Ones which are made by CloudMade themselves. <coughs> and then there's a, if you've logged in, you've got a My Styles. So I, I decided to do, to do one before. I thought I would try and rip off the OS 50k sort of styling for a bit. Now, Bob did mention that not all of the features are rendered, and uh, not all of the features are rendered at all of the scales. So, your map, you should design your map for its intended purpose. So, if it's for um, broad scale navigation to get you from Edinburgh to Manchester, that's going to be a different, possibly a different cartographic representation than if it is to get from um, the centre of Glasgow to the exhibition centre. Mm -hmm. uh, so you always think about the purpose of the map that you're creating before you start tinkering. So otherwise you'll you'll get yourself in a bit of a fangle when you try and make it look right at all scales. So uh, we still have So I think it was about a fifty